I'm going to get started. So hi, I'm Noor Bashara. I'm the founder of Upcycle Design School, which is an online platform dedicated to teaching and inspiring people to start and grow their upcycling idea into a successful business through my online class, Upcycle Design Masterclass, the Upcycle Design School blog, and through the free monthly workshop. Um, sorry about my background today. It's a little hectic. Um, I just moved my studio and I'm still unpacking. Um, but I am really excited to introduce my guest for this month's workshop. Michelle Peganini, founder of Peganunu and I have been following each other on Instagram and recently connected. So it turns out we have complementary businesses in that we're both focused on helping people learn and be inspired to upcycle. So Michelle creates and sells patterns for upcycled sewing designs that can be used for making small batch production. So Michelle, I will let you take it from here and explain more. Okay, thank you. Yes, I, I've been following Nora and I, I looked into her business and I thought, boy, we do have really complimentary businesses because she's talking about all the business aspect and um, you know all kinds of things about setting up a business. and some designs, but I have a lot of designs and I am so dedicated to upcycling that I am fine with anybody using my designs for small batch production. Um, I would license it if someone wanted to make, you know, 200 a year or something like that. But if you're doing small batch production, I am more than happy to have you use any of my designs because I believe the more upcycled garments we have out there, the more the word will spread. And I just love upcycling. I think as sewers, we have magical skills and we can make a real difference for the planet. Plus it's fun. And I'll tell you a little bit about how I got started and how the designs are, are set up. I worked in the medical device industry. I was a certified biomedical quality auditor, an expert in food and drug administration regulations for the development, manufacture, distribution, and servicing of medical devices. So if that sounds pretty far from fashion design, it was pretty far from fashion design. <laughs> and I was good at my job and it paid super, super well. And I did it for 40 years, but I consulted for the last 17 of those 40 years. And I was at a client's working on a long-term project and one of my coworkers got throat cancer. And I watched him start to go through treatments. And I thought to myself, you know, Grandma Moses has been your hero and you've been saving for retirement since 19. And you keep saying, when I retire, when I retire, when I retire, I'm gonna be an artist. And then I thought to myself, what if I don't get to retire? Not everybody does, you know, you don't know what's gonna happen in your life. And so I immediately enrolled in fashion design school, which I found out from being in my wearable art guild group. I'll tell you more about that group later. So in 2009, I registered for a class and the week after I registered, my contract got cut. I'd been there for two years. So I immediately registered for three more classes and I took a semester off of work, which I hadn't done. I gave myself a sabbatical, which was freaking amazing to do. I felt like a kid in the candy store. There is no one's parents that say, you're going to fashion design school and you're gonna be a fashion designer. So no one's parents ever, 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 right? So everybody that's at fashion design school wants to be there and they're all excited to be there and they want to learn. And it was a mix of ladies like me that were older. Some of them were already retired. Some of them were doing the same thing I was. And then there were some young people who were in there too. And we had about half and half. And I went from 2009 to 2017, I went part-time for all of that time period. And I would take, you know, one, two, sometimes three classes, depending on what was going on in my life. And I ended up with certificates in dressmaker, small business, technical fashion design, and theatrical costuming. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Well, one of the things I found out when I was in school is that fashion is one of the largest polluting industries on the planet. And I had no idea. And I, I realized, when, the more I heard about it, how that could be possible because it's all the way from um, pulling chemicals out of the earth, growing cotton with pesticides, you know, the whole supply chain all the way through to, we buy this stuff from overseas, it's shipped to us, something like, I don't know, Noor probably knows the figure, but something like 95% of the clothing that we buy in the US is made outside the US and it's shipped 
here, which means fossil fuels are used to get it to us. And then when we're done, if it's not thrown in the trash or the very tiny, tiny percentage of things that are actually resold in thrift stores, then it's shipped back overseas someplace and more fossil fuels are spent. And then a lot of it ends up in the landfill and might get used again. So I looked at this and I thought, I can't bring myself to buy new retail anymore. I just can't. I, I kind of took a stand for myself that I wasn't going to do that. Now, every once in a while, I buy a garment that's made in the US. I do buy undies and bras that are new and I buy socks that are new <laughs> and sometimes shoes that are new, but most everything else I have is thrifted or I bought from another artist. I will do that or I made it myself. So I'll show you what I have on. You'll probably only be able to see part of it. But this is uh, one of my designs that I'm just getting ready to release. And it is an old tablecloth and a couple of tea towels. And that's the kind of thing that I like to wear. And like you, if you go out in your upcycled garments, they look different than normal garments. And people stop me in the store all the time and they say, where did you get that? What is that? And then I'm actually a relatively shy person, although it might not seem like it. And then I automatically have something to talk about, right? It's like an icebreaker, <laughs> whatever I'm wearing. So I dress in a way that people wanna to talk to me about it. And I'm fine with that because if I'm gonna talk about something, that's what I'd love to talk about. And people don't even know about upcycling. They don't really know about repurposing things and they get all excited when they think about the fact that there's all kinds of stuff that can be repurposed. I buy a lot of what my household goods in thrift stores too. The duvet that I have, I bought at a thrift store. I mean, if you go around the house, there's just tons of stuff all over the place. And I volunteer at a thrift store, which is fun. So here I was making, uh, just buying from thrift stores. And as I said earlier, some of you might've heard, I was fixing things from the thrift stores. I was hemming, I was embellishing a little bit. And then I started cutting them apart and putting them back together again and playing around with it. And I threw so much stuff in the circular file to begin with, because it's really kind of hard to teach yourself to upcycle. I, I wanted to play around. But when I had something that worked, I would take it into school and I would ask the teacher, can I stand up in front of the class and can I show everybody what I'm doing? And they were very generous. They all knew me. They knew I was wildly enthusiastic about it. And so I got to share with fellow students what I was doing and, and get encouragement from them, which kept me going, even though I was throwing a lot of stuff in the circular file. So Fast forward, I started wearing, of course, my clothes other places besides school and women started stopping me and saying, you know, just what I said before, where did you get that? Where did that come from? You made it. Oh my God, how did you make it? That's made out of men's dress shirts. I don't understand, you know, um, it's amazing. And I realized because I was getting stopped every time I left the house that I probably had a business and I could teach home sewers how to upcycle. I could have just made upcycled clothing, but because I have a background that's kind of like process engineering and I wrote a bunch of standard operating procedures. And I also was a corporate trainer. I thought I have the skills to do an educational kind of business. And so I can use my standard operating procedure writing background to write instructions for upcycling. Because if you've done upcycling already, you know when you're cutting things apart and putting them back together again, if you keep any of the original garment, you're doing deconstruction, reconstruction, you're not using just pattern pieces. And so that's the basis of my patterns is that some of the garment remains intact most of the time, except for what I have on right here. Although I did use the hems um, for the hems on the garment. But if a lot of my designs are based on dress shirts because the quality of the fabric's good, the construction's good, there are uniform pieces. So it doesn't matter if somebody sewing with a size for a 12 month old or a size 4XXX, the pieces are all the same. So the instructions follow through and this, the size is self-scaling. So that's how I've written my instructions. And what I wanna do is share the screen with you and take you through a quick trunk show of my garments. So you can see more what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna share my screen and find that to share. Okay, so whiteboard, desktop, and let me find my Google Chrome and make it big and start it. Can you guys all see that? Yep. Would you like to know more about that? Yes, we can see it. 
Stay tuned for this trunk show and introduction, hosted by Michelle Paganini, founder, designer, and educator. What does Paganunu offer? We offer instructions and education for how to take old clothing and turn it into new fashions. Some people call this upcycling and some call it refashioning. With the Paganunu method, you start with existing garments instead of flat fold cloth. You end up sewing in 3D. You disassemble garments and then reassemble them into a whole new configuration. Because you're starting with existing garments, there's no need to have a traditional pattern. So if we're not using pattern pieces, what do the instructions look like and how do they work? Let's look at an example. For each deconstruction and reconstruction step, there are written instructions accompanied by illustrations. On average, there are six to eight pages of illustrated instructions. We've worked the kinks out of upcycle sewing so you don't have to. So if there's no pattern with sizing, how exactly do fit and sizing work? You start with a garment that fits your best and shoulders exactly the way you like. We don't alter anything above the armhole. So if you have a fit that fits in your best and shoulders perfectly, you are all set. Let's look at an example of how Paganini solves some fitting problems and ends up looking fabulous. In this case, I've selected three dress shirts to start with. The shirt on the left is the one that fits me in the shoulders and the vest perfectly. As you can see, I can't button over my belly because it's too tight. After the Paganunu Peggy treatment, it fits me beautifully. I have plenty of room in the hips and belly. The two lower front panels were taken from other dress shirts. Here's a before and after from a side view. You can see in addition to the shirt not buttoning down the front across my belly, it's tight in the hips and it bunches up in the back because I happen to have a sway back. Once again, you can see the Paganini treatment has solved this problem. In the back, we see the most dramatic difference of all. All that bunching is gone and there's a nice smooth fit on the hips. The great news is, is all of these changes are achieved very simply in the deconstruction and reconstruction process. Whether you're a pear shape like me or you have a different shape, there's a Paganini pattern for you that solves fitting issues. As we go into the trunk show, I want to show you this legend that talks about which designs are good for which figures. The shape legends are also color coded for which ones are recommended, could work, and are not recommended. The recommendations are based on hundreds of women trying on Paganini samples. There's also a legend for difficulty. If you have sewn a garment before, then there's a Paganini for you. There are three difficulty levels, experienced beginner, meaning you've made at least a garment successfully, proficient at garment making, and proficient at garment making with advanced fitting. There is also a Boro style jacket made out of denim that requires a lot of decision making, really is an art to wear garment. The garments that are easiest to sew and work for every size are marked with a star. Let's take a look at the trunk show. The first step is the Ashley, which is pretty simple to sew and good for all body shapes. It can be made with two to three dress shirts and it has some bust shaping. It has pleating in the front and in the back I've used sleeves to create the back panel. Although I use very dramatic color blocking in this one, the Ashley is great for a professional setting if you make it in very similar colors. In the second example, my customer and I both have on an Ashley. She's wearing one that she made. The Cindy blouse is also easy to make and it works really well for inverted triangles and apple shaped ladies that carry weight on their belly but have slim hips. It can also be made to work for an hourglass or pear shaped figure. The motif on the front that mimics a bust, waist, and hips is optional. The second version does not have that front motif. Instead, it has a pocket on the lower left and a patch on the upper right. The Cindy is a very quick sew if you don't add the front motif. The Borum style jacket is an art to wear garment and it's actually constructed on top of a waffle robe the kind that you would find in a spa or a hotel. The instructions include design principles that might be applied when making this garment. Of course, it also includes construction techniques. In this example, a belt has been used for a closure. This design is unisex. It looks great on everybody. I had a man customer make a version of his own and it looked terrific on him. Although I don't have Sashiko stitching or Boris stitching on here, it's easy to add. I had another customer make one with a lot of sashiko stitching and it was absolutely gorgeous. 
Another of our unisex designs is the cervical scarf. There are two versions included in the instructions. One is patchwork here shown with flannel shirts, and the other is made out of denim. The example shown here includes slashing, which gives it a chenille-like texture. Those instructions are included. Either one of these would make a terrific gift. Next up is the Ellie, which is our most popular pattern. It takes a t-shirt, and I don't know about you, but they always are too tight on the hips, and it adds a swing back, which gives you more of a fit and flare profile instead of that boxy fit that a normal unisex t-shirt gives you. Although it's named the Ellie t-shirt, it works for other kind of knit garments. In this case, I've taken a hoodie and added the same swing back to give myself a fit where I could actually zip up my hoodie. What did I use for the back? Part of a cashmere sweater that was pre-shrunk. I've also used this treatment for merino wool sweaters. This design is simple to make and I recommend it for getting started. The double collar is a great way to add flair to a shirt. You harvest a collar off one shirt and add it to the second shirt. It's also a great way to balance the color distribution in your design. You can see what a big difference it makes in these two examples. Once you've made a few upcycled shirts, you're gonna have scraps and the Judy flower is a terrific way to use them up. Sewn almost entirely by machine, there are three different centers provided in the instructions. I use mine as brooches on garments. Some of our customers have used them for headbands or for package decorations. They're addictive to make, and I can tell you they're great gifts. The Michelle dress is a favorite of mine. You can't really tell right here, but it has super deep pockets. The pockets are made by turning sleeves inside out on the front of the dress. Some of our customers started making the Michelle dress as a duster, which I've done here. You can see that I added lace to the bottom. It's easy to make this one look boho or romantic. The Noelle includes instructions for making a tunic and a dress. In this example, you can see I made a tunic and they come out asymmetric in the front and the back. There's a band on one side, which gives the illusion of bust shaping, but there is actually no bust shaping in this design. In this example, the Noel has been made up as a dress by adding a tear onto the bottom, the second tier. I wore this to a Valentine's Day dinner two years in a row, and women would get up and stop me and ask me where I got my dress. By the way, if you need a dress just for special occasions, but you don't normally wear one, then this is the dress for you. So the bottom tier on with the 4.0 stitch, and you can take it off when you don't need a dress anymore and you've got a tunic to wear. Add it back on and you've got a dress again. The Patty is a design I always recommend for beginners. I've made more of these for myself than any of the other garments combined. There is no bust shaping, so that part's easy. You can add pockets on the front, no pockets. And it has a high-low hem, but you can choose how high and how low you want it to be. In this example, it's super oversized on me, but I still love it. The white and flowered part on the back is from a skirt. The other part is from a sleeve. The pocket and the band on the back are made from a cutter quilt. In this last version, I added a tear on the bottom and I'm wearing it as a duster. There are so many different ways to personalize your Paganunu. You may remember this garment from the very beginning when I showed how Paganunu solved fitting issues. This is a Peggy, one of our most popular designs. The Peggy is semi-fitted in the bust and features color blocking on the front using three different fabrics. Because of the bust fitting and the arch in the middle, it's ranked as one of our more difficult patterns. One way to make it simpler to sew is to not use an arch and just go almost straight across on the front. In this example, the strawberry fabric is actually a vintage tablecloth. I also swapped out the white buttons for red. The Rebecca dress is a classic shirt dress. You add a tear onto the bottom if you want it to be knee length or below. The skirt section is made entirely from upside down sleeves with the cuffs forming the waistband. I made this example for a contest and I used three Ralph Lauren Southwest shirts and one pinwheel corduroy for the back panel. The Sandy blouse is one that I highly recommend for inverted triangle and apple shaped ladies. One of the terrific design features is it's an upside down sleeve flowing into a circle, which is great for highlighting machine embroidery or some kind of special fabric. And it also creates kind of a cocoon coat effect right around the rear end. 
We can see in the second example that it features machine embroidery of a parrot on the circle. We have an online class, 45 minutes of video instruction on how to make this unisex denim bag. It can be made as a shoulder bag or a crossbody bag, which is how I make mine. This oversized crossbody version is one of my favorites. I've used it many times for traveling and I love that it gives me hand-free storage. I made this one out of a pair of cargo shorts which gave me extra pockets as well. They're also easy to embellish and make personalized. This last version is a more medium-sized crossbody bag. I highly recommend this class. If you're interested in working with denim, there are all kinds of tips in the beginning that can be applied to other kinds of projects. In fact, this would be a great class to take before tackling the Boro jacket. This class is hosted on the Teachable platform and broken up into small segments. You can go back and revisit any of the segments as many times as you want. I also offer a free upcycle selling tips class on the Teachable platform. I bet you already know your favorite Paganini. Instructions for all our designs are sold on Etsy, including the online denim bag class. We set you up for success and we've got you covered no matter your size or shape. You are invited to join our online community on Facebook. We inspire each other with examples of upcycle sewing. We share our Paganini's and we support each other's creativity. Thank you for joining us and finding out more about Paganini. All right, you got the tour. I have one more jacket in the works, but oops, hold on one second. Hi, I'm Lucy from So Essential, and today I'm sharing with you some of- Okay, no Lucy from So Essential. Does any, do we have any questions about anything so far? I forgot to say in the beginning, I'm pretty informal, and so I'm happy to answer questions as we go along. I see some things in the chat. I'm just going to take a ah. Thank you from Ottawa, Canada. And Jane, Jane Wolf is on as one of the participants, and she is saying she's made over 40 upcycled shirts. She's made 40 patties. She's made more patties than I have. She sells some of them. She gives them to friends. She wears them. Jane, do you want to just say a little something as long as you're there? Well, I think what I really love about upcycling, oh, my hair. Um, is I've never been a, um, a sewer because I couldn't figure out how to make things fit. And what I really love about Michelle's um, patterns is they are so easy to fit. And um, I love how you can customize them. I do a lot of applique and throw buttons on and um, I love, I, I wear my food well on my shirts and it's real easy. Like if you get a stain, I either put a patch on or put a button on. And um, some of them, I, when I first started, I didn't look as closely at sleeves um, and some of them were worn. So where I had the sleeves on the side, I got holes. And so I put patches on patches and people just go crazy wherever I go they go oh where'd you get that shirt so I agree with Michelle if you um if you want to make a statement about your clothes this is a really easy way to do it and a fun way to do it I probably have 45 shirts hanging in in the closet ready to take the place of the ones that I have paint and stains on um I do the outlet stores here and I might get 15 shirts for $12. And so it's, it's a really economical way to play in uh, clothing. Anyway, that's what I have to say. Thanks, thank Michelle. You. Yeah, thank you, Jane. I didn't know Jane was gonna be here. It's really nice to have her be able to say that. So Donna asked a question, is there anything for someone who hasn't made a garment but can use a sewing machine? So I would recommend the scarf pattern. And I would also recommend the, the um, Judy Flower. Those are two good ones to get started with. Judy Flower is pretty darn easy and it's fairly useful as well. Someone says they have my Threads Magazine article. That was in 2015, I believe, issue 177, if you have Threads. And that just described 
a little bit about my business and how to do a particular, actually it shows an illustration that's very close to the patty. And, oh, I don't see your jeans makeover video mentioned when you use the belt loops as a design element. I actually have those jeans on today. I, I, I don't think I can show them to you very easily, but um, yeah, that's a brand new video and I haven't added it onto the trunk show. So, um, what can I say? There are seams that I put down the front of my jeans and it's super fun. Maybe if we have time at the end, I'll pull that up and you can see it. I'll pull it up in the Etsy store. People love these jeans. They absolutely adore them. They're just felled seams. I opened up the side and put felled seams all the way down the front. And so it's very textured and they're fraying and it's, it's just fun. I wear them all the time, love it. Okay, so I have shown you all of the designs. What did I want to do next? I have lost track. I'm talking. I have a quick, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, so the amount of time it takes for someone to make one of your designs, like a shirt or a dress, for example, um, how many hours would you estimate is the amount of labor involved versus making a piece from scratch? Mm. And how much time do people also save by upcycling in terms of, of creating product? Well, you saw that a lot of them were made out of dress shirts because you don't have to do the placket, the button holes, you don't have to add the buttons on, you don't have to do the collar, you don't have to do the collar stand. All of that saves you a tremendous amount of time if you want a slightly tailored look. It depends on the design, like the complexity. Jane, how, how long does it take you to make a patty at this point? If I just make them as a pattern, I can maybe make two in six hours. Oh however, That's however, funny. however, yeah. however, if I do a lot of applique, when I make them for myself, I throw on lots of applique. I've been trying um, different kinds of cuffs that Michelle talked about where you not just have a cuff, but you have an applique down your cuff. And I throw on a lot of buttons and I can futz around I can, I mean, I have futzed around on the last one for a day and a half because I played around with different kinds of cuffs and I played around with different kinds of pockets and, you know, did a, took the collar off and did some fancy things with that. So, I mean, you can do it in a short amount of time, like the everyday shirts are really quick. The first one probably took me six hours just because I wasn't used to reading a pattern. I hadn't mm -hmm. sewed in a long time. I had a new machine. All of those really added up to what the heck am I doing? Um, but now I just sip through it. I don't even have to look at the pattern. I just, you know, whip them out. Yeah, Thank that's you. that's cool. Cause like for me as an upcycler, one of my uh, uh, challenges is that I completely deconstruct the jeans for the most part. And I have so many hours of labor involved in each piece. So mm -hmm. this is inspiring to see another way of doing it, another way of looking at it, so. Speaking of which, I'm gonna show you a very quick example where I cut and pinned an Ashley together. So I have a video for that. But um, the, the answer to the question too, is it depends on the pattern. I think that the Patty and the Ellie, you can for sure make in under a day, even probably the first time you do it. There's some things to get used to about this type of, of sewing. So deconstruction and reconstruction, if you haven't done it, is really different. You're sewing in 3D, which is a different way of sewing than sewing with flat fold cloth or cutting things apart and using like a traditional pattern to piece them together. So if I, I think probably the best thing to do right now is to go ahead and show you the video so you can see what it looks like to do deconstruction and reconstruction. I'm sort of giving away a little bit how to do this design. However, I can tell you that um, with like eight pages of instructions, there are subtleties that you will find out in my instructions that you will not see when you watch me just doing it. So let's see, someone says, I've watched all your YouTube videos and interviews, very inspiring. I do have a YouTube channel. If you look for Michelle Paganunu Paganini, you will find my YouTube channel and I have a bunch of freebies on there. And I also have, um, the upcycle, uh, not, what do I have? I'm trying to remember what the name of my school is on, nor maybe you can look it up for me. I forgot to write it down um, on Teachable. I think it's Paganunu Upcycle Sewing on Teachable. Maybe we can put that in the chat. 
if you have a chance to do that. If you, if you don't, we'll figure it out at the end. We'll go to it and people can write it down. So let me share screen again and find that video. Uh, oh, I didn't realize I was muted. I was uh, saying I'm gonna look it up right now. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm going to share the YouTube channel um, in the chat right now. Okay, and it looks like I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute because it looks like I don't have that video up, so I need to look it up. Here we go. However, I have not shared screen yet, right? You guys can't see that? Uh, not yet. All right, let me figure out how to do this. Share screen. All right, here we go. Got it. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is basically take a couple 2T dress shirts and do it on a half scale dress form so you can see what it looks like to deconstruct and reconstruct. Hi, I'm Michelle Paganini, owner of Paganunu and Upcycle Sewing Guru. I wanna show you today a quick demo of how to do deconstruction, reconstruction, upcycling, which is the method that's used for all my designs. So what I'm gonna show you is this design, which is the Ashley top. And then also just how to do the double collar. Now, I'm not going to sew this whole thing. I'm not going to do a, a beautiful job putting this whole thing together. What I'm going to do is cut and pin just to show you what it looks like to do deconstruction and reconstruction. The Ashley can be made with two dress shirts. So I've got one already on a dress form, and I'm going to show you what parts of a shirt I pulled off of a second shirt to make this combination. So what I did is I took off of a second shirt, I took a placket which is the part with the buttons and the button holes. I took both sides of the placket off. This is not how it's gonna go on the shirt. I'm just showing you the pieces that I pulled off of it. I pulled the placket off, I pulled the collar off. So that's just cut off with a raw pinked edge. You can do something different. There's a, a double collar pattern that goes through all the intricacies of how to do a double collar. Then the other piece that I cut off is the whole back, just from under the yoke. So I cut the whole back off of this piece too. Now, with this set of pieces, we're gonna make this design. The next thing I'm gonna do is take this shirt off of the dress form and come back with you and show you how to cut it to get started on the deconstruction. I'm going to make a cut across the front and the back of this shirt. So one of the things I could do to make sure that they're aligned properly is to nest one arm inside the other. So I'm going to do that right now. Turn it inside out. And then nest it inside the other arm. And once I've done that, I can line up the plackets, shake it out a little bit. And I've straightened out the front and the back so they're pretty well aligned. Now I'm gonna make a cut, not including the placket, but I'm gonna cut all the way from back here through to the front, right along this aqua line. I use pinking shears rather than regular shears because that is the way that I finish my seams. I don't use sergers on these. I'm going to stop just shy of the placket. And in this case, because I have a stripe and it makes it super easy, I'm just going to turn it over and go along the stripe on the other side. If I didn't have a stripe, I would be marking it and making sure that these edges were pinned and lined up. All right, now what, Michelle? The next thing to do is cut straight up the back. And I'm going to make sure my seams are aligned exactly and they are aligned pretty well. Also, because I have a stripe on here that makes it easy, I know exactly where I'm gonna cut and I know if I'm going straight or not. I'll be back in a minute on the dress form. I've got the shirt cut apart. Here are the plackets, the sleeves are upside down and the part that I cut away is hanging down. 
what's going to happen is it's going to get reattached just on the front part, not on the back part with some pleating. But in order for us to really reattach it, we need something to pin it to because we're going to butt the edges up against each other just like they were when it was attached. So in this case, I'm going to get a stripe of material or a strip of material and I'm going to cut a band that will go just along right here. And then that will allow me to have something to pin it to. All right, we've got the dress on the dress form. And I've gone ahead and added an extra band to the bottom so I have something to pin to. I've now got a little seam allowance hanging over and I've got two pleats. I've got both sides pinned up right now. Let's turn it around to the back. You can see there's a very open back and that is where the extra piece that I cut the back of the other shirt is going to go. So the question is how much room do we have and do we need a pleat right here? And it looks like we definitely need to pleat because there's not enough of this to cover if it's left just as is. That's fine because you can see how much it's sticking out. So let me pleat this in. And then pin the back on. I wanna match the length right here so that the hems can just be butted up against each other. And I have excess, which I complete. I could put it in more than one pleat, or I could just put it in an asymmetric pleat in the back, which is what I'm going to do. So all of a sudden, we have a front and we have a back. How are we going to finish off those pieces? So remember the plackets that I pulled out. This one happens to have the buttons on it. They're actually going to go right across the bridge that we made, that piece of fabric where the two raw edges are. And I'm not going to cut it, but you would cut it so that it goes underneath the pocket. You could use ribbon. The same thing's going to happen in the back. And you can see you'd get a nice clean finish. So we could be done right now, but there's also just a little bit of fun you can have by adding a double collar. I have another collar. They can go an inside or outside mount. This one's a little smaller than the collar on the shirt. So I'm just gonna pop it in the inside and we can see what that would look like as a double collar. Adds a little pop and it's kind of fun. So that's how simple it is to do deconstruction and reconstruction. Of course, there's a lot more to it. I just ran through it really quickly. That's why you would want to buy the instructions and find out all the details and how you deal with sizing. The two sets of instructions that I used in this demo, again, are the Ashley and the double collar instructions. So these aren't traditional patterns in the sense that you get pattern pieces that you cut out. You can see that I used parts from dress shirts and it explains how you cut the different pieces apart and put them back together again. And that's the sets of instructions that are for sale on Etsy. So if you go to www.etsy.com backslash shop 
backslash Paganini. That's where you can find all of these instructions. All right. Does that make it clear to see the example of it cut apart and put back together? Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Let's see. Let's, let's see what else people have to say. Um, oh, there's the link to the YouTube channel. That's great. And also the Upcycle Sewing um, Teachable with the embellished jeans. Pinking shears instead of scissors is a great idea. Yeah, I love my pinking shears. I use them all the time when I'm upcycling. It's, first of all, I don't know how to use my serger, which is pitiful, but I can't thread it. And so it's been a paperweight, which I finally moved to another room and I need to take it in and either just give it back to the people that sold it to me or try one more time to learn how to thread it. I looked it up online and apparently it's one of the most difficult to thread sergers in existence, which does not give me courage. Um, no. and, hmm? I, I, I was uh, sorry to interrupt you. I was, just, I was saying, oh no, um, I, I find with the serger, I had one years ago and I spent, I used to spend more time threading it than I ever used it. So <laughs> I end up doing this with my scenes. Oh, putting on a, a, a like a binding? A binding because I want my pieces to look elevated, but just mm -hmm. adds to the craftsmanship, the labor and the price. So I love the yes, pinky shears. <laughs> Excellent. And Anne says, I love to make Paganu designs. Great demo of the Ashley, the magic of Paganu. Um, and then someone said they had to run to another appointment. Will they be able to watch the recording on later? Yes. And she wants to try one of the patterns ASAP. So you guys got to know, I am so passionate about this. I am so excited to share with you how to do these designs and that I, that I, um, I keep working on new designs and releasing them. And they're really fun to make. They're addictive, like Jane says. And I think that there are a number of them that are suitable so that they take, once you get used to making them, they take a little amount of time and they are actually financially viable to sell because of course you want the lowest level of labor and materials as possible if you're gonna um, sell finished things. So I would recommend the patty number one. When I'm making batch production, if I wanna sell, instructions, I make the patty. The Cindy's pretty easy too. The um, Ellie is pretty easy. The Cindy, you don't have to put the motif on the front. And the Ashley you just saw, that's not too hard either. But the great thing about, and the, no, the Noel is a little more difficult, but the great thing about the Noel and the patty uh, and the Ellie is there's no bust shaping. So you don't have to worry about whether you're trying to sell to someone with a, a J cup versus someone with a C cup because it just falls naturally on the best. So you, you, know, you can kind of tell which ones might be the ones that you think would work for your audience, especially if you're gonna do custom, you could think about if you are meeting people in person, it's a little easier to do the fitted ones. But if you're not and you wanna just sell, those are the ones that I would recommend. Let's see. Nor says, my Bernina sewing machine has a fake overlock stitch she uses sometimes because it's fast and easy. And Gabby says, I've been experimenting with button downs from thrift stores and I've noticed many of them, especially the white ones, have stain and sweat marks around the collar, neckline, and cuffs. Sometimes they come out and sometimes they don't. I wonder what your process is for cleaning button downs and taking stains out of them after I've sourced them. I don't buy them if they have stains like that. Not unless I, I really like the pattern and I want to use something where I'm going to use the parts of the garment that don't have the, the stains, especially the collar that's almost impossible to get out. So Jane shaking her head. I think she's doing the exact same thing. I don't do that. I am doing the exact same thing. And I've learned to also look at the sleeves because the sleeves is such a big part. And if the sleeves are worn, um, you know, like sometimes the color is great but the sleeves are all worn out i just use the backs and it depends on where you buy them if you buy them at a goodwill thrift store um their button downs are usually 12 to 15 dollars but if you get them at the goodwill outlet you buy by the weight so that's a huge difference in price you're usually paying one or two and and um 
church sales and estate sales, I typically find a lot better quality than the thrift stores. Yeah, thank you for that. So I'm looking up right now um, because I have an offer for you guys. And I'm looking for where it is because I meant to pull it up so I could share it easily. Here we go. And I want to walk through it with you. So let me share it. Share screen, get back to share screen. Okay, here we go. Let me shrink it down a little bit so that you can actually see it. So this is intended for folks that are looking to do a business. Let me take this down. And that is an upcycler special. Every single thing you need to, every single pattern that I have, every single design that I have, which includes six shirts, three dresses, and then Noelle is a shirt and a dress. The Becca skirt, which was not in the demo, the Bora style jacket, the Kendra, which was not in the demo, um, and then five accessories, the jean and belt bag video, embellished jeans video, double collar, Judy collar, and the circle scarf. So it's $289 for all of those, but through July 4th for you guys, I'm willing to do that for $220. So if you think that you would like to get the suite of Paganunu patterns, this is gonna be a really good deal. And the way to place the order, because I, I can't sell it through Etsy very easily, is to let me, um, because I can only attach so many uh, files, is to send the order to michelle at paganunu.com. And then we will figure out how to get that to you. These would be hard copy patterns, except for the ones that are on video, in which case you would get a link to the video. So michelle at paganunu.com. And if somebody could grab that and put it in the, let me stop sharing. Have I stopped sharing? Yes, you guys yes. My face I, again? I just put it in the chat for you. <laughs> Okay, so I want you to be wildly successful in your businesses. I want you to have a lot of choices for what you're doing. I want you to get out there and spread the word about upcycling. Um, I wanna make sure that you're supported and you're successful and that really is important to me. So if you decide that you're gonna do some Paganunus and you have questions, you could certainly contact me at michelle at paganunu.com. And now I wanna just open it up to questions and hear about what you would like to do. If you want to take yourself off mute, if you have a question. I have one. Okay, Leanne. Leanne Akers, Anna. I've bought two of your patterns. Mm -hmm. I haven't made them yet. I think I bought the Boro and the, the first one you mentioned, the um, whatever the easy one is to make. Um, so I really appreciate you sharing the video about how you cut it up and did the separate and all that. I appreciate that. And the um, zigzag scissors. Uh, the um, pinking shears. Pinking shears tip. Yes, yes I have four shears. pairs of those, but I don't know what they're called. Um, the other thing I collect and I have are needle points. I must mm -hmm. have 40, 50 needle points because wow. I was going to put them in rice bags and then I was going to put them on jean jackets and I was going to so I like your design too with the circle with the gathered sleeve because when I saw that I'm thinking I could put a needle point on the back of something and then fan out from there. You um, could that would be really spectacular. I'm looking at all your paint by numbers in the background because um, your background because that's <laughs> another big collectible. Um, but the needle points yeah if you could even something that would have a square shape that that a design that we could incorporate something like that into or people that do i have another friend that does some um, collage artwork kind of panels on fabric mm -hmm. but if they could incorporate that into a garment say even under the um oh my god i took fashion arts i don't even know what this stuff's called what's the shoulder the yoke you know, the yoke under the yoke somehow uh -huh. incorporate a panel there that could uh -huh. be adjustable to any size and yep. then come down from there so there's uh put that in your list of things to do or come up with maybe or uh, yeah <laughs> sure there's so many yeah. ideas oh, in that. so it, I really want to invite you guys to join the if you're on Facebook at all to join the Paganunu um, upcycle Facebook group there's just one question to answer is which what do you love about upcycling to get into the group because what people have all kinds of ideas and I'm always amazed at what they do and and so many different you know permutations of Paganunus 
And you aren't limited to sharing Paganu news on that site. And if you're selling, I actually let you sell as well. So if you wanna put a garment up for sale, you're allowed to do that. I believe that we need to support each other and I'm not worried about um, competition. What I have is pretty unique and I like for people to see that they can make them and sell them. I like people to see what other people are doing. So it's just a very supportive group. It's a lot of fun. And I'm sure some, I know some of you here are from the Pagnunu Sewing Group. So I invite the rest of you to go on to uh, Facebook and just type in Paganunu Upcycle Sewing Group and join us. Any other questions, comments? We have a question um, from Jane. Do I attribute Michelle on my Etsy shop? So do, do we have to give you credit for the pattern if we're going to sell? Using I would prefer that you do, that you have something on there that says designed by Paganunu. I'm not going to come after you if you don't, but it'd be really nice if you did that. Actually, somebody had somebody else had asked if the a tribute was needed, and I just said yes, I do. So. Yeah, I I would prefer that you do that. And like I said, I'm not going to come after you if you don't, but it would be very nice if you did. Well, I just think it's you know classier. Yeah, it is. And Paganunu <laughs> has a name too. Actually, I, I didn't mention it, but I've been on. Some of you may have seen me on It's So Easy if you watch It's So Easy. I had guest appearances on three different seasons and talked about upcycling in every single one of them. That's something that you can see if you go to the YouTube, which the link was put in the chat. You can go to YouTube and you can watch the It's So Easy episodes and you can watch ones that I've done. That whole collection though is free on the Upcycle, um, Paganunu Upcycle Sewing School on Teachable and the link was also put in the chat for that. So instead of going through one by one, they're kind of categorized in different, um, well, different categories, they're organized. So I, I would suggest going there and signing up for that class for free. Great, and uh, I was going to share the Facebook group in the link, but my Facebook account is not letting me log in right now. So if someone else wants to uh, drop it in the chat, um, that would be appreciated. Or and search for um, Michelle Paganunu Paganini. Yeah, I'm sure it's very easy to find. Or Paganunu Upcycle Sewing Group. Michelle Paganunu Paganini will get you to my personal account. And then from there, you can leap over to Paganunu. But actually, just Paganunu Upcycle Sewing Group will get you right there. Someone says they've seen the episodes. <laughs> oh, good. And Jane put the Facebook profile. Any other questions or comments? Yeah. Um... Not that I'll ever make that many, but I'd like to know um, what what do you consider small batch? Like how small, or and what? Where should, where should, where did you draw the line? That's a good question. Um, well, and is you... it for one particular pattern, or is it for all the patterns? And I do think credit should be given because it's ethical. Yeah. If you have people working for you and you're making hundreds, that's more than small batch. If you're doing it yourself, that's small batch. Okay. I think that's where I would draw the line. Okay. Um, if you have a crew of people making it, then probably we should talk about licensing. But if okay. you're making them yourself to sell, however many you can make in a year, go for it. Okay, okay. I've started looking for plain shirts that I can eco dye, so like linens and cottons and things. Mm -hmm. And it would be fun to be able to um, remodel better than I've been able to do on my own. Thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure the instructions will help you. I'm really, like I said, I'm passionate about making sure that you are set up for success. And because I was a process engineer <laughs> and I'm a, and I call myself a nerd with lipstick, I might look you know, lipsticky, but really I am a detail oriented person. And um, Jane can tell you or anybody else on here who's looked through the patterns, there is a lot of instruction on there. And I have tried to put illustrations at every single step because it's a pet peeve of mine to have instructions for a pattern where you you get lost and you can't follow it. Yeah, so a lot you know, of designers and writers assume people know things, but uh, even as an experienced sewer, Mm -hmm. I appreciate 
the obvious being written because sometimes I haven't had enough sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and it's, and you have to wrap your mind around that it's 3D sewing to begin with. And so there's that bit of it, you know, to kind of get over in the first place. And then there's following the instructions. So when I put out a pattern, I do have testers test it. Like the, the jacket that I have on is a pattern that I'm working on right now. And that's going to be a physical pattern. It's actually going to be a physical pattern that can be made out of dress shirts or jeans. And I have the instructions for how you cut apart dress shirts and jeans to make this jacket. And I had it out with four testers, two for jeans and two for dress shirts. I'm going to go this afternoon after this and take it to my girlfriend who's helping me do the physical pattern part. And um, she's and I did some grading. So she's going to do the grading and then I'm going to be ready to release it. And I'm excited and scared all at the same time because Everything I've done up until now has been deconstruction, reconstruction. This is the first time I'm actually putting out a physical pattern. But I do my very best to make sure that the instructions are going to be clear to you. And if they're not, you know, you guys let me know because I do make adjustments sometimes to the patterns. Thank you. I've looked at your patterns before and I'm on, I'm on there's a Facebook page where you sometimes post Upcycled Cloth Collective. Yes, I and actually got banned from that group, so I don't post there anymore. <laughs> oh, that's why I don't see you there anymore. Anyway, no, I got banned. Um, but you can share now, my stuff there. I've looked at them before and I haven't bought them yet. And now I'm really encouraged that I see that they likely have something to offer that I don't already have up my on my skill set. So, yes, I've worked the kinks out for you. Thanks, Donna. I have two questions. One being, I've done upcycle clothing before. However, I haven't sold it. How do you handle sizing or how do you let people know what size they are? And my second question is the, the label that's already in the shirt. Um, is that a problem relating to selling, um, considering it's someone else's, some other manufacturer's shirt? That's a great question. I put my own label on top of the other manufacturers or, or I take it out. But I make I have my own labels that I make up on Spoonflower and I print them and put them in there. So and then sizing, I put a range like it could be small slash medium because it kind of depends on bust size. Right. All of the sizing really is in the shoulders and the bust. It's not in the hips because they're all free hip. So um, people that normally wear an extra large in a dress shirt can sometimes fit in a medium because it fits their shoulders and there's enough room in the hips so that they don't have to worry about it. For me, I fit in a medium or a large on, and I'm a size 14, I'm the average American woman, height wise and size wise, I'm completely average. And so I can fit in a medium dress shirt where I would never be able to button it if I had one, but with the Paganunu treatment, I have a free hip so I can fit in a medium. So people will have to kind of try them on to see yeah. what's going to fit so if they kind of hold it up and see no if you have an enormous vest then you might still have to go to a larger size so that you and have a drop shoulder um just so that you can fit the best thank you mm -hmm. any other questions would you like to see my etsy shop okay let me pull that up and then share with you actually let me share the screen and go to desktop one. Michelle? Yes, ma'am. Did you say that you got your um, Michelle labels from uh, Spoonflower? Yeah, I set them up and print them as fabric. Oh, okay. And so I just make them into squares and then I cut the squares out and finish off the edges. Okay, good idea. Yeah, actually works. I've thought about getting regular labels, but um, I haven't done that. So etsy.com backslash shop backslash Paganunu will get you here. And the patterns are available in two formats. The special that I was talking about, you would get hard copy, but you can get PDF or you can get hard copy. The difference in price is what it costs to mail and what it costs to print them. So although Etsy doesn't let me display with them right next to each other, if you, um, if you sort through, you will see that each one of them has a $20 one and each one of them has a, uh, a $16 one. Here's the embellished jeans class. 
which I happen to be wearing today. Let me show you what those look like. They're super fun. I moved the label down by the ankle. People absolutely adore these. Wow, ten dollars is is quite the bargain. <laughs> it is quite a bargain. Yeah, I, the price is low on that one. Um, and I do a really thorough job on my video classes too. I was learning how to do it. So this one is a huge bargain. Yeah, I can see that all of your videos are really well done. I spent all of last year learning how to do the videos. So the two that I've done are the bags. And let me go, let me see if I can get out embellish jeans class and find the bag one. Yeah, it's impressive. You do them all yourself? I do them all myself. Yeah, I taught myself how to use, I'm looking for the bag, how to use the iMovie. Here's the bag. Ah. And then how to use um, some other programs that help like Canva and Procreate. And my husband shoots a video. We made a studio in the, in the house. And then I do the editing and I learned how to change the voiceover. So here's the jean bag with the belt, the crossbody jean bag. It's reversible. That one I had a lot of fun embellishing. There it is in, in a, just a photograph, one that you saw already. So cute. And this is if you didn't, if you went, didn't want to do hole punches in a belt, you can use a braided belt and just run some buttons through there. Did somebody have a question? There was one question in the chat asking if the new pattern that you're wearing um, is included in the package that you're offering today. When I release it, I could include it. It won't be out probably for at least two weeks, but I could include it in that packet. Just for you guys. Thank you. All right, so now you've seen what the Etsy store looks like. If you want to buy, you know, just a couple, this is a, this is the place you want to go. I actually recommend going ahead and getting the digital, um, unless you're getting the bundle pack, because you can print it on your printer, and there are no pieces to cut out and pin together. If you want it with a colored cover, then go ahead and get the twenty dollars version, and I will mail it to you. So I'm going to stop screen sharing, and let you know that. With the bundle pack that I'm offering, um, I'm actually going on vacation starting on Saturday, so it might be a, a week delay before I mail them out to you, but I will get them to you, and you will have a plethora of things to work from. Or if you're in a rush, buy the digital copy. <laughs> if you're in a rush, buy the digital copy of, of the one you want, and I'll reduce the price by that digital copy if you happen to have gotten one, and you can just email me at michelle at paganunu.com. Let's well, see, Spoonflower, I don't see, I don't think there's anything else. Someone said they had to run. Can you think of anything else to cover, Noor? I think we've been very thorough. Um, would love to know what your plan is for the future, what, what you're working on next besides the jacket that you're wearing. Well, I made a pair of Palazzo pants out of jeans, patchwork Palazzo pants, and everybody seems to love those. So I was thinking about doing that one by video. But since I've been spending the last year and, and then a couple of months working on the pat pattern um, for this jacket and the videos, I think I'm going to take a couple of months off and then come back rejuvenated and see what else there is to do. You know, and I actually want to look for more collaborations like the one I have with you because I want to spread the word about upcycle sewing and I want people to be successful with it. And um, having my Facebook page is great but how else am I gonna spread the word and get more people upcycle sewing? So anybody you wanna share with, that would be great. If you have suggestions for me about, you know, maybe someone else you can see collaborating with, let me know. Cause I really, really, really want everyone that sews to know that upcycling is a choice and that they can be successful at it. It's all about collaboration, so. Yeah, thank, thank you, Nora. I really appreciate you hosting oh, this. You, you're going to wait to mail anyway, so you can put in the extra pattern. <laughs> yeah, yes, I, yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, um, I just, it's great what you're doing. And um, I, because I know that I see a lot of people upcycling things. Um, and uh, it doesn't look polished like yeah. yours do. Yours look 
they look designer, they look polished. And so that's encouraging um, to do it for that reason that it looks so good because I don't wanna make something that looks, unless it's deliberately shabby chic, but I won't even wear ripped jeans like everyone does. Call me old school. Yeah. <laughs> well, press, as, as my teacher Rhonda Cheney said, my professor, press, 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 press. That's part of what makes it look professional. Press every seam, press it as sewn flat, and then press it open if you need to press it open or press it over if you're going to stitch it down. Pressing makes a world of difference. And I can tell whether I, when I look on um, you know, Etsy or I look on um, Pinterest, I can tell when people have not pressed and it makes a big difference in the way that it looks. Well, so much upcycling is just throwing layers upon layers of different junk. And I look at that and I go, oh, at my age, there's no way in heck I'm going to walk out in those kind of clothes because, you know, I have, <laughs> I teach, I participate in different groups. I don't want to look like I've just walked out of the rag bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you very much for your time and your attention. And I'm hoping to see some, um, yes, thank you. I'm hoping to see some orders from you, then I will know you're on your way to success. And I just really appreciate spending time with you today. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, this has been very inspiring. And I always learn so much from these workshops. So it was a, an honor to have you here with us. And as I said in the beginning, I will be publishing the recording on the blog at upcycledesignschool.com and YouTube. And you guys will all be on the mailing list. So you'll receive the email next week when the recording is published. So thank you guys so much for joining us and nice to meet you guys, um, the new faces, nice to see the familiar faces and um, thank you again. All right. Bye-bye.